Hello guys and welcome to a new Steel Division video today by me Vulcan. Today I have for you Gilmore's Girlfriend vs Idreg in round 2 of the second Community Patch Tournament. This is played on the Community Balance mod and you can find a link in the description to all of the changes that the mod introduces. Today's map is Omaha and on the Allies side Gilmore has chosen the 1st Infantry and on the Axis side Idreg is playing the 352nd. So let's talk about some of the changes to these divisions. First of all, the 1st Infantry. So the Assault MGs have been increased in availability from 3 to 4 per card, so we may see more of those to help out in open ground. The 50 cows have also been increased in availability, so we may see more use of those. They are very, very strong early on due to their high veterancy. The Assault Bazookas now have very good stealth, so they are much more useful to use throughout the game. They've added one more card of M7DDs in Phase C with th 3 Picard. That definitely assists the M4A1s in those sort of late game engagements. And then you have uh, one card of Bazookas in Phase B, uh, which sort of gives you those little bit extra infantry AT capabilities. As for the 352nd Infantry, well, there has been some adjustments to the availability of SBW-204s, both the standard F variants and the CMD variants. They've increased the number of MGs from 3 to 4 per pack, so you can uh, basically control those open range engagements a little bit better. Although against the 1st Infantry in this case, the 50 cows will likely do better than the MG-42s. They've increased the veterancy of the pack 43 in phase C from 1 star to 2 star, so that gives you a little bit late, a little bit more late game power to assist alongside things like the uh, Jagd Panther. Uh, it's unlikely we're going to see the Jagd Panther on this map, but we might see the pack 43 late game, uh, but I, I actually pretty much doubt it because there aren't really any large targets that do require that much AP from the 1st Infantry throughout the game. They've got an increase in veterancy on the FK-18s, uh, which you can get in Phase B. So potentially a better artillery to look out for from the 352nd. They've added two sets of two-star four Picard Stostrup in A. So we are going to be seeing more of those most likely for those closer range engagements, allowing those Stostrup to you know really help out uh, where the Ostrupen would otherwise fail. They've added a set of 81mm mortars to Phase A which can help with the early game sort of artillery engagements. It means you don't have to worry so much about the FKs early on and uh, sort of fills that 1,200 meter artillery gap that the 352nd really had. We also added some pack 40s They've added some more uh, Stoss Troop in general, as well as a few other changes. But let's have a look at what's happening in game. So on the top side here, we have... A 50 cal, there's going to be a couple units of infantry. Those will most likely be assault breaches or assault MG, and then we have the command there with an AT gun. Further down for Gilmore, we've got a 50 cal in the center. There's going to be a, what looks like assault bazookas, and then we've got another couple units of infantry. And on the bottom side, it's going to be an assault team. We've got assault breaches or assault MG with another bazooka squad. There's also going to be the command there. Over on the side of Idreg, he has brought in the Pack 38 early on, as well as a Grimfear on the bottom side with a couple units of infantry. It's going to be some infantry uh, moving up into this town as well with some fusiliers. That's just going to be a couple of Ostroop in there. We'll have to be careful about the sort of concentration of Gilmore's units here. So that's going to be one assault breacher on that bottom side. We'll have to check what the other infantry squads are soon enough. But uh, coming in hot to the centre here, Idreg moving up with some more Ostroopen. And there's going to be a bunch of Sostrup pressing hard into this town, but straight into two squads of Assault Breachers. And those Sostrup, they can do quite a lot of damage at close range. You can see them chewing up the Assault Breachers there. But the grenades getting the better of the Sostrup. But now with both of those Assault Breachers reloading their HE, we might see the Assault Breachers actually go down. The Panzerjäger is trying to help out with some of the engagements here. That's just engaging the Assault MG and the 50 cal in the mid. The Ostrup and being completely caught out. Panzerstrek going to have to make a run for it so it doesn't get 
taken out in the open, but nice moves by Edreg to get the Stoss troop into this town early on. That's provided him with a plus one early into this game. Now, Gilmore really needs to put some pressure on this bottom side. He's seen a lot of infantry move into this area. He can see the Panzerjäger, so Edreg has definitely invested more into the top side than he has the bottom side. And where Gilmore has the concentration of forces here, this is like really where he should make a push. So pushing forwards these assault breaches is a start, but these assault breaches should also be moving up. We've got the assault team here. There's no sort of armor or anything that can really stop this infantry running forwards right now. You haven't seen a Panzer 35, and there's nothing like that. So a lot of these units are very wasted if they just continue to stand where they are. There is, of course, the argument that Gilmore is sort of concentrating on this top side, but Edreg at the moment with his infantry micro just trying to get the better of the assault breaches, prevent them from uh, using their grenades effectively. I'm going to be able to take out the unit of assault breaches, but the assault team a lot harder to kill. They do have the flamethrowers to work with, and so they will be running down the Stostrip here. Stostrip going to be putting down some smoke to cover themselves off as they make a run for it. But the assault team trying to micro its way around to continue its engagement. Does manage to take out the Stoss troop there, but the Stoss troop get the better of the assault team. Oh, nicely done there by Drake. Running around that smoke to find the kill onto the assault team. The trouble is, when you get too close, the flamethrower cannot be used, so uh, the Stoss troop just ripping to shreds that squad with its superior veterancy and firepower. So, really, really, really well done. Um, that does kind of create a bit of a problem for Gilmore. He will likely have some more assault breaches left, but I think he's going to lack uh, assault teams from here on in. And so that may allow Idreg to get a advantage in infantry overall. So the 120mm mortar does take out the AT gun on the top side. That's now gone. 50 cows engaging Ostrup in a really close range. Not ideal, but JU-87D going to be coming in. For the bombing strike. Here we go. Good old Stuka dive. Doesn't do too much damage, but uh, definitely prevents the Ostrubum from being ripped to shreds. And honestly, there might even be a surrender to be found here because there's no command in sight. IG 18 engaging the assault bazooka as they do get found by the uh, Fusiliers. These Ostrubum surely going to go down in the open to the assault MG. There we go, that's the 50 cal surrendered. Nice bombing strike there from the JU-87 does allow that to happen. We see a unit of infantry going down before they unload. Assault MG now just left in the open in the face of the Fusiliers and the SBW-204. 120mm for mortar. Uh, looks like it was finding shots onto the assault leader that are spotted by the uh, Stostrup here. These Ostrupen, they are going to be able to get out of this engagement due to the assault bazooka not being able to surrender them. So the Fusiliers have found the bazooka here using their recon and they will continue to run those down. Ostrupen now pressing on to the Assault MG, but they are going to get taken out. SBW 204 now under fire from the 50 cal. We'll have to be a little bit careful there, but here comes the JU-87 once again. That's going to be trying to prevent the M4DD from killing the Panzerjäger. Just looking for the pin there onto that tank. But P38 Lightning has come in. Will manage to find the kill. I was a little bit worried the P38 Lightning might overshoot its mark there, but not quite. And now the P-38 Lightning will continue to strafe these other units. Gilmore finally making some ground on the bottom side, making a, a push here with his superior infantry. There is the 81mm mortar to help out, but it's going to have to be on point to stop these infantry from just continuing uh, to charge forwards. Sauce Troop definitely going to get the better of the Assault MG at this range. And it looks like on the top side, the SBW-204 will surrender the Assault MG. So the 50 cal is taken care of uh, by the Stoss troop, I would assume. And then the Assault MG taken care of by the 204. E38 Lightning still trying to do its strafing runs. And the Oss troop on the bottom side in the meantime just falling back. 81mm mortar providing smoke. 
I think that probably benefits Gilmore's girlfriend more than it does Idraig. What Idraig really needs here is, like, a, like I mentioned before, a Panzer 35 or, or something of the like. Um, that is difficult for the assault breaches and assault team to take care of. Yes, of course, the assault bazooka is here, but uh, it's unlikely that Idraig has uh, seen that yet, and he has brought in a couple of uh, fusiliers to kind of hold the line. So, a Panzer 35 would be able to work around this area with the help of that recon. Well, this isn't good. The SBW-204 does get the shot onto the rocket artillery there. That is a huge mistake from Gilmore's girlfriend. That rocket artillery as well is very lackluster in general. It is looking for the kill onto the 120mm mortar, or at least the pin onto that mortar, uh, but will not be too effective otherwise. J-87 going to be coming in for the bone strike onto the M4DD, and Idraig is going to be getting ready to make a push with the 204. If we see the M4DD go down to the 204, that will be devastating on the top side here. P38 Lightning was left in the sky to strafe and use up a lot of ammunition, so won't be available for a little while. And this is the chance that Idraig needs to clean up this M4DD, or maybe just even surrender it if it moves out of line of sight of the assault leader here. Well, that's going to be the Panzerjäger taking shots. Didn't even see that had line of sight. That's of course going to cause the, cause the M4 to continue to fall back. And as soon as this comes around the corner, surely it's going to get the kill. Internal fragments. <laughs> Look at this engagement. There we go. Finally goes down the rate of fire there from the 204, getting the job done eventually. So now no more M4 in the top side. And uh, Idraig is going to continue to solidify his position up there move forwards more of his, his infantry, bring more infantry in, uh, something that the 352nd definitely has an abundance of. So Gilmore kind of lost the sort of initiative down here. He had an abundance of units that just weren't used for a long amount of time, and now it's given Idraig uh, time to sort of get his units into position. So he's got these two units of Fusiliers, which do have the MG34s that they can use at range. And against the Assault Breaches, which only have the M1 Garands at, at sort of 200 meter range, the Fusiliers are enough to stop this from being a problem. Now the Assault Breaches in this case should be using their smoke in order to continue their advance. Um, that way they can get within the 100 meter range of the Fusiliers and, and take them out much easier. But now we can see the 81mm mortar hitting the assault breaches hard. The assault leader is actually out of uh, range of these infantry squads. So this strafing runs just about, maybe not even, going to stop these Ostrupen from surrendering all of these units. This is, this is really, really bad for Gilmore because he does have the command here. So a little bit of lazy micro does cause him to lose three units of infantry as his P-38 Lightning fails to save the day. Assault Bazooka now going to be under threat as these other units continue forwards. Flak filling has been brought in on the bottom side. We'll manage to stop the P-38 from doing those strafing runs. Across the map elsewhere though, Edreg is rolling on through. The Assault Leader's still alive but haven't really been preventing or helping his line in any way. This is really unfortunate for Gilmore because I really thought that he could get a decent amount of ground on the bottom side whilst Idreg was focusing on the top side, but failed to identify the amount of points invested up here. Because that was the 120mm mortar, the Panzerjäger, the 204, you know, all of those Stosh troop came in here, whereas there was a very limited amount on the bottom side um, that if the assault breaches had pushed earlier onto, could have definitely dismantled very quickly. So we've got the assault bazookas here. They only have the M1 carbines. It's one thing that it is a problem with some of these first infantry units is they do have a limited amount of HE at, at long range or long to medium range. So the fuse is just going to continue to push forwards. 81mm mortar that can help out but will need supply now as it has run out. Plus two in favour of Idreg. So what can the 1st Infantry do at this point? Unless he's got a second M4DD, he could really be stuck in place here for a long time. What he ideally needs is Phase C to come around sooner than later. 
so that he can get the M4A1s online, things like the M7DDs, and support his uh, rifle squads pushing forwards. But considering he has to wait another eight minutes until phase C, that isn't going to happen anytime soon. Gilmore has decided to purchase an M2A1. Although that is a nice choice to clean up things like the flag filling, the 81mm mortar, the 120mm mortar in like counter battery. I'm not convinced it's the best investment at this point as he needs to prevent these units from making too much ground. And Idreg pushing now a plus three, really, really forcing this game home. The 204 has found shot onto the CGMC. As soon as that gets a shot on target, the CGMC will likely start to fall back. <laughs> the 204 though missing almost every shot as it continues to be hit uh, by the M15. Well, just one shot on target. <laughs> Not a single one. Like, even a bounce off the front armor would have caused more stress to the CGMC in that case, but not going to be this time around. This 204 is going to be uh, getting into cover here, hiding behind those trees, allowing the M16 to get close, and then we'll take a shot. The M1 gun will not be in line of sight to help out, so the 204 will probably get a kill there. So the change in amount of SBW 204s you can get definitely taking effect here from the Community Balance mod. These can be such effective units at close range. You can see the 204 though, it's going to have a go. Will it manage to find the shot? No it will not. The M16 actually going boss mode right now. <laughs> The 16HG might actually get the job done. If it manages to pin the 204 at close range, then we will see a surrender. Now on the bottom side, P38 Lightning did come in with some bombs. Uh, Focke Wolf 190 has been purchased from Edreg, but does need to be careful with these engagements because the CGMC and M16 are both on the field. Panzer III, as it came through the mid, did get hit by the M1 gun, which is uh, not very good, but uh, will survive with just an internal fire for the time being. Uh, Flakverling not in line of sight to stop that. Okay, just about does manage to do so in time. Due to the way that that's placed, it couldn't see through the tree line quick enough to hit the, flak the P-38, but uh, as the P-38 flies over the mid, it actually gets killed by the Flak-36 and the Flakverling. So M-16, MGMC. Now going to be engaging the Fusiliers. Can the 204 get the kill at close range? Surely Idreg will want to try for that. Now we see an A20C being brought in. That is a very, very odd choice. Maybe he's trying to find targets for the M2A1. But surely seeing his P38 getting shot down makes this A20C a very poor choice. There goes the M16. 204 finally does its job at close range. These assault breaches still very much alive, but pinned down behind enemy lines. They're not going to recover before the Grenfjell get to them, that's for sure. But this is a huge lead for Idreg. 73% map lead. Panzerstreck is going to take out what I think was an M5 gun before it unloaded. So lovely Panzerstreck shot there. 204 being hit by the Bofors, not much you can do about that. No HE shells on the 204. Another unit going to be taken out before it's unloaded. Gilmore really dropping the ball today. And did manage to create sort of a small second line of defense, but never anything that's going to really help win the game at this point. So continuing to fight on valiantly. But I can't really see how this is going to get any better. Because as we move into phase, or well, the latter, phase B and phase C, a Drake can just continue to bring in more and more infantry, which will just make it harder and harder for Gilmore to push back. So the game is pretty much over at this point. It's just a matter of whether or not Gilmore can try and find some kills for himself to maybe redeem some of his previous plays. Those Grenadiers definitely taking a lot of damage but m15 is pretty much blind uh, without recon so grenadiers are able to get out of line of sight and into cover m20 op has been brought in 
That's some serious off map. We'll have to be careful that it doesn't get sniped by the uh, 204 here. The 204 does have the 1000 meter range engagement. So we want to take a wide berth from this position. Fusiliers aren't going to be moving in towards the M1 gun. A little bit of impatience there from the 204. That's not good. Will the Fusiliers actually get pinned? They will! The M20 OP manages to save the day there just in time. The M1 gun not dying today. If the Fusiliers had managed to get through there, there would have been nothing stopping them from killing that M1 gun. P38 Lightning not even able to uh, drop its bombs as the Flak Fling is in position with the Flak 36. Fock Wolf 190, I don't think we'll get the kill. The P38 Lightning is a little bit too fast for that. But now we see the off map coming in. Really weird off map placement. It might actually hit the IG-18, but there is such a better target here. And I think it's quite simply due to lack of uh, recon on the side of Gilmore when trying to use that off map. The P-38 does come in to try and ambush the Fog Wolf 190, but uh, not quite able to get the kill. M-20 OP does get bombed by the JU-87. But... Um, not too much else happening otherwise. The 204 and the Panzer III can now push through potentially. But not long now until Idreg uh, takes the victory. With 3 minutes and 35 seconds until his score wins him the game. More infantry is on its way, just making things even harder and harder for a comeback from Gilmore. And that's going to be it. Gilmore actually surrenders. And after 18 minutes and 19 seconds, a very convincing victory for Idreg. The 1,200 kills to 490 losses, really well played uh, by Idreg. We see the M2A1 howitzer here, didn't really do too much in the end uh, for Gilmore, so investing in that at that point in the game was pretty rough. If we go to the losses first, we'll see how much damage Idreg did. So the 204 here, finding a kill onto the M4DD and the M16, pays itself off so many times over. That is ridiculous. The Stoss Troop did a really good job against the Assault Breach. Just some really nice micro from Idreg with the smoke from the Stoss Troop in order to win those engagements. 120mm mortar only took out one M1 gun on the top side in the end. But this IG, managing to kill off a couple of Assault MGs is quite nice. Almost pays itself off. Pack 40 killed off an M1 gun. Black Fling shot down that P38. But it was all down to the plays on the top side here, especially with the 204 uh, plus the JU87. Let's not forget about that. It may not have got any kills, but uh, pinning down those units with the JU87s was, was pretty smart from Idreg and allowed him to uh, remove the M4s early on. And if the M4s are lost on the side of the 1st Infantry and you don't have things like Stuarts on your division, then you do get put in a really, really tough spot. I am actually surprised we didn't see any Stuarts come out uh, because those could have definitely saved the day against things like SBW-204s and the Panzerjägers. And there, there wasn't actually any real need uh, for the M4s. The only reason you'd need an M4 is to maybe tank shots from the Pack 38s whereas a Pack 38 if it shot at a Stuart would just straight up kill it. So yeah. Unfortunately, Gilmore just didn't take advantage of his infantry mass on the bottom side in the early game and ultimately it allowed Idreg to just maintain and control the pace of the game throughout and that's pretty much it so hopefully you guys have enjoyed it thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one goodbye <laughs>